I'm Virginia Applebaum. I've lived in the district for going on 16 years. And in the time that I've lived here, I have come to love the area. I love the people in it. I love the environment. I'm here today to voice my opposition to the proposed prison in Briarfield. No one that I've talked to in Briarfield or the district supports this prison. And it is so important that the people are heard on this and that those in Montgomery listen to us. Even if there were any possible way the math could work on this issue, it does not address the issues of murder, abuse, and staffing that were the concerns of the Department of Justice. It just moves it to a different building. The building is going to be built roughly where I'm standing now. Yeah, this, this is the site. Prison contracts that we've seen for Elmore and Escambia counties are 237 pages long. They were so secretive, the legislature couldn't even get a look at the full contract until we all did. That's my understanding of what they went through, trying to learn what was even being contracted. Any contract that is that long and that secretive is going to put somebody at a disadvantage. It's putting us at a disadvantage. It's putting the people at a disadvantage because we are going to be the ones paying the bill. These have often been referred to as 30-year contracts, but if they were 30-year contracts, that would fall under the legislature. So if it's actually a 30-year contract, the legislature has been deprived of its duty to budget and appropriate and approve contracts of this nature. The legislature is our voice. Not only would the legislature have been denied, we would have been denied. We elect them to speak for us, the people. What they did to get around this was create a lease, and that is important to know this is a lease. This is not property that the state will ever own. But they created this lease that would be renewed every year for 30 years. We do not have a 30-year contract. We have 31-year contracts that will be renegotiated on a yearly basis. The $88 million that is currently on the table with year one, that's going up. And it's gonna go up every single year. And that money is gonna come from us. And when I first started reading through the contract, my first thought was there may be a way around it. There may be a workaround. The legislature could simply not fund it. But there is a clause in the agreement, and I'm going to have to refer to my notes because this was a 237-page contract. And there are some specific provisions in there that affect the legislature and dictate to the legislature what the legislature can and cannot do. In section 4.7.1 on pages 24 and 25, there's a clause regarding appropriations. The Department of Corrections is directed to, and, the, and this is a quote from the contract, obtain, designate, or use any other lawfully available funds that are not funds appropriated by the state legislature. And prior to the satisfaction of its other obligations, so this comes first, this comes before any other obligation that the Department of Corrections has. Prior to any other obligations, prioritize and apply all funds appropriated by the state legislature for the benefit of the Department of Corrections, as well as other funds lawfully available to the Department of Corrections. So if the legislature tried to do a workaround and just simply not fund it, that leads to what the contract refers to as a non-appropriation event. 
And this brings us to section 9.4, and it's on page 39. It defines when a non-appropriation event becomes a prepayment event. That section gives the state 180 days to vacate the premises. Bear in mind that the Department of Corrections has already closed prisons. Where are they going to go? They don't have anywhere to go. Whatever the prison companies want, we're going to have to give it to them under these deals. And there is no reason to think that the Briarfield contract is going to be any different. And the legislature gets its power and authority from us. That authority is the people's authority. So not only is the legislature being denied, we're being denied. The people are being denied. We're being denied our rights to say what we want and the right to even expect that our wishes would be carried out. Those rights are being dictated by private companies who will profit from this. They will profit at our expense. These contracts make no sense whatsoever from a fiscal standpoint. We're talking $3 billion over 30 years. That $3 billion will be coming from programs that are supposed to help the people.